Hello, Yakana Man. This, come on, ma. Um, tonight, I am going to be making a video response to everyone that's been talking about the uh, debate about whether it's possible to become Japanese. Um, I don't usually go in for this sort of drama stuff, and I realize I'm not a particularly active member of the YouTube Japanese community, but uh, this one um, got my interest. Um, I was talking to Hiroko a few days ago, actually, just about a week ago, I guess, about this sort of thing, and uh, and I realized she made a video just recently, and now Hiko Simon's pitched in, and Gimme a Break Man's pitched in, and Tokyo Zeppelin's pitched in, and I'm sure lots of other people are making responses too, and I thought I'd just give my uh, my two pennies, my two cents, um, and what I think of the issue. First of all, I guess I better just say exactly where I am and what I'm doing in Japan. I'm not just like a, another tourist kind of guy. I'm, I've am i been studying Japanese for about seven years now. Um, I just graduated from university last summer and, and I came to Japan on the JET program to do what is known as the CIR position, um, which is a Coordinator of International Relations, which sounds really fancy, but it's um, basically uh, translation work and, and, well, just the promoting intercultural relations, uh, good goodwill between countries and that sort of stuff. And yeah, so I came last summer and I've been working in the uh, city hall in a city near Nagoya ever since, um, building up my Japanese, you know, trying to understand Japanese office politics and, and that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, um, at the moment I'm looking to be here for longer term. Um, um, and I've had a fair bit of experience in Japan before, being a, a study abroad student and coming here as a volunteer and stuff, so um, I feel like I've got a fair bit of understanding about Jap Japanese and uh, Japanese culture, but obviously I can't compare it all to, to masters like Hiko Simon who have been here 20 plus years and, and give me a break man who's just bought a house and stuff. So um, by all means, uh, I'd like to give my opinion, but uh, I do stand in, in humble regard to how much experience they have had, and obviously with Hiroko-san herself being Japanese. Um, right, so where to begin? Okay, so yeah, basically, um, Hiroko... There was a, a video by Bobby, Bobby Judo um, back in January now. Um, I guess he's a guy in Saga, and from what I gather, uh, I did watch the video a while ago, but I've forgotten most of it now, <laughs> unfortunately, I'm sorry. Um, but from what I, what I gather, he was kind of feeling a bit uh, alone and, and isolated out in Saga, which I completely understand, uh, Saga being quite a sort of a, the countryside destination. I was, when I did volunteer work myself, I was in uh, Hyogoken, which is about two, three hours north of um, Kobe, right in the countryside, at a, a home for sort of. Um, people with disabilities and I was doing stuff like that. So I know what it's like to be right out in the sticks. And also my study board at Acti International University as well was like uh, anyone who's been there will know. It's it's right in the, the, the mid of the greenery with a, a small little centaur next to it and stuff. But anyway, yeah, so I know what it's like to be in the sticks and and sort of be, uh, obviously, the first time I came to Japan as a volunteer, um, I did ex sort of expect, I guess uh, everybody has to go through it. I think it's like a rite of passage and a sort of sense, like every foreigner that comes to Japan, um, even if they're just a tourist or just interested in the language, anime, manga, whatever, the first sort of rite of passage you go through is experiencing being sort of isolated and, and left out and you can never integrate and why wouldn't they treat me like a normal person? Why are they always giving me special uh, attention or even worse, like why are they discriminating against me or something like that? I think everybody goes through that. I'm still going through it, I am suppose, you know, I don't know when it ends, if it ends, but I think the, the biggest hurdles that are at, at the front, at the start, when you can't really speak the language and when you're sort of new to the culture and there's lots of things you don't know. So I would hope that I'm, I'm kind of over the, the, the brunt of it now, but I don't know, maybe, maybe not, maybe the worst is yet to come or something, but um, yeah. So I think I can completely understand where, where he's coming from and, and like Tokyo Zeppelin said again about, about uh, feeling that you can never be one like a Japanese person, or treated like a Japanese person, or fitting in, in a sense that you won't be, you won't stand out, stick out like a sore thumb and be noticed, or, um, you know, you just want to go about your, your daily life um, in a manner that, that, that is, uh, you know, relaxed and enjoyable. You know, like, just like you, you would in your home country. I think that's, that's the general idea about what we, I, st I, st I speak very broadly when I say we, we as, as maybe foreign, foreign nationals who come to Japan or any other country matter think. You just want to sort of enjoy life and, and have it run smoothly, you know? But as a foreigner in Japan, where there is a, still a general consensus that 
that the Japanese culture, the Japanese society is very homogeneous and, you know, that there isn't much uh, differentiation, you know, even you've got Yamato Minzoku and, and the Ainu Minzoku, all the different subsections as well, it's still the general sort of feeling that the Japanese are, are one people and, you know, foreigners are sort of like a, a new guest. It's still very much like that. So I think, and as I was talking to Hiroko on Twitter um, about a week ago, that to an extent that is, you know, that, that is the current situation. And to, to an extent, every person that comes here and, and wants to try and integrate into society, assimilate, understand and, and live here, has to accept to an extent that they're always going to stand out, you know. And I say that based on, um, based on just like appearance, as well as other things like cultural clues, body language, uh, the language itself, of course, is a huge, a huge barrier. But that overcoming that, um, <clears throat> just sticking out, it is something that's that's not really going to happen. And um, certainly, I don't think it's going to happen in in my generation. Um, what I do think, and this is just my my personal and you know, um, probably largely ignorant <laughs> opinion, but what I do think is that I would like Japan to become more internationally open. Uh, in the future. And I mean that in a sense that foreigners living here will not stand out quite as much, you know. I, and I say this with, with, with a, a lot of caution because I know what the situation like, or I have a feeling what the situation like in, is in Britain right now, where you get a, a multicultural society with all sorts of uh, races, you know, black people, white people, Jewish, Christian, all, all sort of races and religions mixed together. Um, and there is a lot of tension in, in Britain right now. Um, you know, I, I'm not an expert on this, I haven't studied it academically, but I'm just going on what I, I have studied and what I know. And multiculturalism, becoming a, a fully-fledged international multicultural society is not a, an easy road. And I certainly don't imagine it to be an easy road either. And for me to say that I would like to J Japan to become more international and multiculturally open and accepting of other people is a, kind of a dangerous statement, I feel, because, you know, it could go either way. It could become a, a mess. You know, where, where, where literally the culture is ripped up, overthrown, and Japanese traditions are, are dis discarded of, and, you know, the language, you know, all this sort of thing. Um, and I think, and as, as Hiroko rightly said as a Japanese person, and as what she feels uh, other Japanese people think, I think the Japanese people are, are maybe a little bit afraid of that, you know. And I would be. If, if I uh, cherished my culture, I probably should cherish it more. If I cherish my culture as strongly as I, as I know many Japanese people do, I would be scared of, of, of new people coming in and changing things and, you know, saying, this isn't right, you, sh you should do things this our way, you know. And the whole sort of uh, Americanization, Westernization, I should say, um, of Japan just, just speaks testament to that, you know, how foreign forces are coming in and, and things are changing. But I do think, to an extent, that in internationalization, that is, is inevitable. You know, in, to order to interact, understand, and get along with other cultures, I think there has to be sort of an underlying level of, of uh, sameness. You know, ichi, ichi shiteru, like uh, to be to be one with. Um, I don't think that's sort of in the level of human rights um, and democracy. I mean, but that's just my opinion. You know, democracy. You've got communists, and you know, it's very dangerous ter ter territory here. But I think there has to be a, a very basic level of of uh, agreement about how to live and, and what things are important in life. And I think the disagreement on those sort of issues, maybe not the fundamentals, but even the, the ones sort of above that, the disagreement there is, um, is really where we get the, the discrimination, these feelings of discrimination and standing out and, and you know, not really fitting in. Like, um, I, I did write an essay on this in philosophy, like the argument from dis, uh, di the argument from difference, like how can we have a a certain absolute set of moral values when every culture disagrees about what uh, is right and wrong, what is good and bad. And I would answer that very, 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 very basically by saying that I think at, at the fundamental level, assuming the theory of evolution is true and all that sort of stuff, that human beings as, as, a, as a species have a, a, a way we need to live uh, in terms of cooperation with each other, um, making families, living in a society, like, without these sort of things, we wouldn't be able to function as a, as a united race. And I think those, that fundamental level is what I'm speaking at right now.